Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, here again at the uh, IRG office, as well as uh, as online, for the public debriefing on the outcomes of the 51st Barrack Ordinary Plenary Meeting in Cyprus, which we had last week. Um, I think this was, uh, for various reasons, um, uh, a special uh, a special plenary. Uh, we will have a lot of content and presentations uh, uh, later. Um, but uh, one of the, for me, most important uh, starts, for example, was uh, the fact that I invited our colleagues from Ukraine to join us to uh, discuss uh, early on the Thursday morning to discuss roaming um, on how we are all helping Ukrainian refugees abroad to still connect with their loved ones at home and also to discuss the resilience of the uh, telecom infrastructure in Ukraine. And I can tell you, we were really impressed with the efforts uh, that are being undertaken in Ukraine to make sure that uh, although there is uh, much destroyed uh, by the Russian war effort, there is also still much working. And um, um, the, our colleagues from NCC explained how uh, the reasons that they see for uh, the incredible resilience of the uh, Ukrainian telecom infrastructure. And I think um, the whole plenary was uh, our, our, not only our support and sympathy go out to the people of Ukraine for keeping connectivity up and running, but also our deep respect for all their efforts. And it underlines the importance of connectivity. Of course, we also briefly reflected on the fact that uh, just days before the Commission uh, also declared that uh, NCC is el eligible to participate in BEREC as a participant without voting rights. So from uh, P3 onwards, so that is October, they will, be, uh, they will be fully participating in our plenary meetings. So that was, uh, I think, all the content from my part. Uh, we have uh, several presentations by co-chairs uh, and a, a lot of whom are present with us here today. Um, as usual, we will have several subjects to be specific, three subjects before taking a Q&A round. Um, I'd like to invite first the co-chairs of the Open Internet Working Group to present um, several of their issues, of their items, sorry, and Veronique will start. Veronique. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Good afternoon to all of you. Also, good afternoon on behalf of the Open Internet Working Group. Together with my co-chair colleague Klaus, we will present you today on the activities of the Open Internet Working Group. First of all, I present to you the outcome of the public consultation on the BEREC net neutrality regulatory assessment methodology. The objective of this methodology is to help NRAs in the monitoring and the supervision of the provisions of the open internet regulation based on various net neutrality measurement tools. Next slide, please. We are grateful and also thank the stakeholders for their contributions they submitted to our public consultation. We received submissions from five stakeholders. You can see the names on the slide. The main comments are related to the following topics. First, we received some general comments. For instance, there was a comment related to the existing tools and saying that NRAs should refrain from the readjustments that burden industry and that may confuse customers who have got used to the established tools. We also received several comments to the chapter on measuring internet access service quality. For instance, some stakeholders mentioned that the measurements should be preferably performed within the operator's network as the browsers and on-device apps are located outside the operator's network and are therefore also outside the operator's uh, responsibility. Furthermore, we received uh, some comments to the chapter on uh, detecting differentiated traffic management practices and we received many comments to the chapter on the end-user environment. For instance, there was a request to provide uh, clarifications about how to handle new forms of VPNs, such as Apple Privacy Relay, and also some concerns were raised related to the use of devices other than personal computers. 
Moreover, we also received uh, some uh, concerns on the chapter related to general Internet access service quality assessment. And the concerns are mainly related to speed prediction. For instance, the question was raised, what happens if an ISP does not meet the predicted values? And there was also a request for further guidance uh, to assess specialized services. Finally, we also received a few comments on the chapters of individual results measurements and certified monitoring mechanism. Next slide, please. What the Barak response is about. First, Barak has stressed that uh, we are striving to reuse existing methodologies and also to consider the evolving landscape. We have also clarified that uh, Barak, that industry standards, that was also a comment made by stakeholders, uh, not met, do not meet the Barak's requirements. We have uh, clarified that the measurements should be taken against the server outside the ISP network, that is the long-standing position within Barak. We acknowledge the importance of end-user environment and we empower the end-users to easily measure and the performance of their internet access services. And finally, there were a few statements we do not agree with, and you will also find further information on this in uh, the final document. What changes have we performed as a result of the public consultation? Well, there is no substantial change. We only provided clarifications and we kindly invite you to look at the final documents that are available on the BARAC website. I now pass the floor to my colleague Klaus, who will inform you on the update of the guidelines. Okay, good afternoon also from my behalf. Uh, next slide, please. Our next topic is BARAC Open Internet Guidelines and the results of the public consultation. First, I would like to thank all stakeholders actually contributing last year with our call for input and now for the, the public consultation. I would just like to note that I was a bit surprised to see that we received only 22 responses. That's a very low number to our open internet, let's say, consultations. And I think we can take this also as an indication that stakeholders were generally agreeing with our reading of ECJ rulings. From those stakeholders that answered the, the consultation, we had eight stakeholders strongly supporting our reading. We had seven stakeholders disagreeing with us. Actually, some stakeholders saying that they don't like the reading, but basically agreeing with that and also some stakeholders being neutral. So from this, we can say that we received actually quite a broad support for the reading from BEREC and the, the changes we proposed. We had um, two confidential contributions. So the, the 20 contributions are now published. And please go to the, the BEREC website and the open internet section there. You can find all the, the details and contributions if you're interested to read them. Next slide, please. Now, regarding the, uh, the topics that were addressed by the stakeholders. Many stakeholders were addressing the reading, not surprisingly, but we had also many stakeholders and ISPs especially uh, discussing the customer care and topic of uh, topping up the, the subscription after the data cap has been reached as well as the public good services. Here, however, I would like to mention that ECJ or the regulation doesn't make any distinction between the commercial and non-commercial zero rating offers. However, we believe that the EU and national legislation could be used to justify practices for public interest needs. Then we had, again, many comments regarding the transitional period and the right to withdraw contract without the penalty, as well as some, some contributions regarding the supervision and enforcement. 
Many stakeholders also requested further clarifications and some uh, substantial phrasing proposals were also uh, proposed that were still in line with our reading. And we had also stakeholders actually giving input to the various other topics, as you can see here, fair share and user definition, IPv6 uh, network termination point and the critical properties of the internet. You can read further information and the details and our responses from the consultation report that you can find our web page. Next slide, please. Okay, what was changed after the consultation? No substantial changes were made. We basically clarified the, the, our message in eight paragraphs. And, and what we did, we clarified our message that only the application agnostic pricing practices are allowed. That's now, I think that should be now very clear in the guidelines. And, and here you actually can see the, the further details on the, the, the changes we made, but the, 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 all the changes are basically about this one point. And we also added a couple of examples. One example, regarding emergency communication, example from the European communica Electronic Communication Code, an example of free access to information from the Roman regulation under the exception A. And we have also published a comparison uh, file um, with the comparison to the new guidelines and the previous guidelines, so you can see all the changes easily from our website. Next slide, please. Now regarding the enforcement and supervision. Well, now the, the guidelines are published and I think it should be very clear that any, um, well, only the, the application agnostic pricing practices are allowed. And therefore I would expect the ISPs to take actions to actually remove and stop the illegal practices. We have still many, many zeroing practices in the market and, and some actions need to be taken. NRAs are monitoring the situation and we are expecting more actions also from the NRA side in the upcoming uh, weeks and, and, and times. And uh, basically it's, it's really their responsibility to do the, the enforcement and supervision. And within PEREC, we will continue our longstanding collaboration really trying to make sure that we share the information, collaborate and, and ensure the harmonized application of the regulation. And if you're interested, of course, the, the, we are reporting on this, so you can expect to have a reporting on the upcoming implementation report in the autumn and also the next year implementation report. This after the plenary free, the, the, the normal reports we do every year. And we have also received some questions regarding the transitional period. And I have to say that you have uh, so many different circumstances nationally. You might have, uh, uh, let's say, offers with millions of subscribers, or you might have a uh, dormant offers with only few subscribers. So you might actually have uh, also a different type of the, the transitional periods, if any. So PEREC is not going to set any European wide, wide uh, the timeline for that, but, but that's basically up to the NRAs if, if some exceptions or the, the, the really the transitional periods are needed and, and, and basically justified. Okay, next uh, back to Veronique. Yeah, thank you, Klaus. In light of the recent developments, Barak would also like to contribute to the debate. And we are pleased to introduce today two new topics that will be handled in the Open Internet Working Group. One is the Barack opinion on the Open Internet Regulation Review. And the second one is a new work item, assessing the IP interconnection ecosystem and impact of the sending party pace principle on this ecosystem and on end users. Next slide, please. Regarding the opinion, well, the European Commission will carry out a review of the Open Internet Regulation as per one of the provisions of the regulation. And the deadline for the Commission to submit its report to the Parliament and the Council is 30th of April next year. 
And Barak will be glad to contribute also to that review. And we will submit our opinion in December this year, and we will also publish that opinion. Considering the meaningful input we received from the stakeholders already in the context of the update of the Open Internet Regulation, and we are very thankful for that uh, input, and also considering the short timing, we think that we can do it without doing a public consultation as the input received from the stakeholders will inform also our opinion and yeah then you will read the final document in december back to you klaus okay then to the other topic uh, again quite a topical issue with the, the OTT fair share proposals we have been seeing and, and, and hearing in multiple different arenas. So we have also started the new work item on OTT fair share and IP in the connection market. Um, I think, uh, well, it's a quite early phase, so we just started the, the, the work item. But I, I can tell you that we are planning to analyze the topic from multiple angles. And you can see further details on the, the under the second bullet point, basically examining the, the well, really the, the basics behind the, the proposal, what are the issues, what are the implications of those proposals and such. As a PEREC, we have already actually analyzed a similar proposal in 2012. And then the, the, the main finding was that such a sending party pace framework might actually cause a significant harm to the internet ecosystem. We, might, we actually need to now evaluate whether the same uh, conclusions are still valid. And, 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 and basically, I, I think it, it's now the work we are doing. Then we have all, all also basically studied the interconnection markets in, in early 2000. We published from PEREC a report 2012-2017. And the topic was also addressed in the Internet Ecosystem Report. So basically, we've been um, studying the subject, but, but we thought that it's uh, now a, a good place to, um, to do a more proper study and, 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 and basically update our work on, on this area. <laughs> and maybe to the next slide. Yes, as, as the, the work has just, just, just started, we don't have that many details, but I think we can present you the timeline. We are planning to gather information. We, are, of course, have a plenty of documents already available, but we also plan to discuss the invited stakeholders and to gather the information for our analysis. So basically, we are inviting a couple of stakeholders or some stakeholders to the workshops where we discuss the, the, some particular topics. And also to make the, 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 let's say, our contributions available early, we are planning to publish two papers, one in October and one in November. The first paper is planned to actually study the underlying issue. So, so really, really digging into the details and, and, and to see what kind of the issues there are around this proposal and in the market. So we are hoping to get a very good fact-based contribution to the discussion. And the second paper, we hope that we have also further details about the potential proposals and we are planning to analyze the, the impacts. So basically thinking on what kind of the impacts the proposals might have for the end users to the competition to the, the regulators. But, but as, as I said, they are just the early, early, let's say, towards and, and we might have uh, some, some further changes uh, when the work progresses. And then regarding the, the rest, we are planning to continue the, the IP interconnection work item and, and really to update our report. So you can expect to have a public consultation um, uh, after plenary two next year and the, the publication of that report end of next year. But that was all from our side. Back to you, Anne-Marie. Oh, sorry. Thank you. And then we go to our co-chairs of the Wireless Network Evolution Systems. Oh. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. And thank you, Klaus and Monique. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo Anderson. And uh, on behalf of the Wireless Network Evolution Working Group, and together with my co-chair, Joe Lynch, 
will present part of our work uh, in the form of a draft BEREC report on satellite connectivity for universal services that uh, we will now have out on public consultation over the summer. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, BEREC interest in this comes partly from the fact that several geostationary or non-geostationary satellite services are or will become available now, between now and the coming years. And we think that this is, is, is of course, of, of great interest to, 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 to look further into. Uh, and uh, in the report, uh, we have two main parts. The report sets out that it's the first part, one part is the result of a questionnaire to all BEREC members and participants without voting rights that have responded to a set of questions. And then the report also describes how SATCOM solutions may contribute to universal services in different ways. And uh, I think important part of this is to, is to uh, an overview of SATCOM solutions and, uh, and how, how they could work in, in this uh, context. And uh, we also try to highlight some key aspects here and uh, focusing on pricing, the expected role in the market of, of, of this type of technology and also the capacity available and the demand side. What, what, is, what does the demand look like for this type of services? And uh, one primarily, primary preliminary view from the BEREC side is that there are, uh, as in many cases, several regulatory issues that have a national dimension. And uh, that's, we think, supports a case-by-case -case approach to SATCOM solution also for the universal services looking forward. And uh, with this public consultation, we invite stakeholders and also encourage, of course, stakeholders to comment on the report. And like uh, we want to include uh, uh, the, the identification of, of any emerging issues or trends that might be added uh, to the information that we have presented here in, 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 the, in the report. So we really we look forward to that. And just to say a few words of, of, the, of the result of, of, the, of the survey here, go to the next slide. Uh, there were all in all 29 responses uh, to, to, the, to the questionnaire and uh, it was clear that uh, the majority here uh, of the respondents did not really have any firm plans or activities going on uh, to include SATCOM a, a, as a part of the universal services at this stage. But it was also clear that the, the majority thought that the SATCOM is not excluded for this uh, in, in the way that, that they, they one look at things at, at this stage. And there was also two cases uh, where man, there is more precise and more in-depth studies going on, more precisely in Germany and in Sweden. So th this, is a, this is work undergoing there. Uh, going to the next slide. Uh, some of the shortcomings or features underpinning broadband as a universal service from, from SATCOM was pointed out. And one of the major things, and I think this is probably also focusing on the geostationary uh, the satellite systems, but it was because they pointed out latency as one issue here, and also channel capacity and, and the data rate here. So that the capacity thing is, is, is important here. That's the one part of the main issues seen by respondents in the questionnaire. Another thing pointed out, uh, came up also in several places, is the cost of this. Uh, there is a, a, an upfront cost to invest in this system for, for, for end users, and there's also uh, the more expensive customer premise equipment that, that needs to be in place. And it's also clear that this in some cases can show to be costly to run because of electricity consumption when it's, when it, when it's running at full speed. Uh, one, I think, also important and interesting fact, feature here is that uh, there was a majority that uh, concluded that there, there are no really changes at, at this present stage that needs to be done in regulation in order to include this as, as, a, as a universal service. So I think that is, that is one interesting conclusion here. And uh, before ending then, I, would, I just would like to re-emphasize that this then goes out on public consultation. I think it's, on, it's until mid-August and we really encourage um, stakeholders to come in with your views on this. And uh, with that, I, I thank you for your attention and pass the, the floor to Katrina and Sandrine for the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ru. So good, good afternoon, everyone. We are really pleased to present to you uh, the final VEREC report on sustainability, as well as, as main takeaways from the public consultation on the document. We can go to the next slide, please. So to start, we would like to remind you the context of, of this work. So BEREC started to work on environmental sustainability since 2020. And in its strategy, uh, 
uh, sorry, in its uh, strategy, uh, it sets out uh, some uh, ground principles to work on the topic. So firstly, Berek recognizes the massive role of uh, digitization achieving uh, environmental targets, uh, including climate neutrality. However, the critical importance of the digital sector uh, uh, in the decarbonization of other sectors, uh, the digital sector also have to do its uh, own uh, green transition. So as a result, Berek has been committed uh, working on ICT uh, related part of the Green Deal and Agenda 30, so SDGs. And this work uh, include, included uh, bettering NRA's knowledge on ICT's adverse impact on the environment and uh, also uh, reflect on potential uh, ways to reduce, mitigate uh, them and the role, uh, the potential role of Berek and member NRA's. So resulting from this uh, ground uh, work and principles, Berek uh, uh, approved the two first deliverables uh, during uh, the first plenary uh, of uh, this year that were presented uh, at uh, the Berek last uh, public day briefing. So uh, firstly, an external study that was conducted uh, uh, by uh, Rick and Ramble uh, for Berek uh, and that did uh, evaluate uh, uh, the, the effects on the environment of uh, electronic communication and Berek draft report on sustainability that uh, summarizes main results of Berek activities on ICT sustainability since the setup of the sustainability working group in 2020. Um, the report also maps uh, existing uh, initiatives and provides a, a first uh, roadmap, potential roadmap for Berek to pursue its knowledge building uh, on sustainability. So uh, the last uh, document uh, was submitted uh, for a four weeks public consultation between mid-March and mid-April. And also a stakeholder workshop uh, was organized to present further the document and start uh, the dialogue uh, with the stakeholders. So we can go to the next slide, please. So to start, we will just like to present to you main takeaways from the public uh, consultation. So as it was said, we organized uh, on April uh, 4th a uh, stakeholder workshop um, that uh, did uh, gathered uh, 150 attendees uh, and also uh, key players uh, um, acting on the twin and green digital transition. So many thanks uh, if you were able to, to participate. A quick uh, short summary uh, is available uh, uh, within the Verac PC public consultation report um, in the introduction. And besides, uh, we received uh, 17 written contribution uh, uh, during this uh, four weeks public consultation from va various uh, players from the industry, uh, but also some association and academic uh, stakeholders. So Berek uh, would like, of course, to thank a lot uh, stakeholders for the engagement on this uh, report. As we will present to you uh, just after, uh, we did uh, include uh, some uh, suggestions uh, in the final uh, version of our report on sustainability, but uh, we would like to insist on the fact that this is just only, this is only a beginning of uh, the dialogue on environmental sustainability. And we will also uh, call to pursue uh, stakeholders engagement uh, in the frame of our next uh, item uh, that we will start uh, this summer and which uh, regards um, indicators uh, relevant for measuring the sustainability of telecoms so yeah we will provide uh, updates on this new uh, work item uh, uh, as soon as possible so you can see uh, on the screen uh, the main uh, takeaways uh, uh, from the public consultation, of course, uh, for more detailed, uh, we, details, we will uh, um, uh, advise you to read uh, the public consultation report that summarizes uh, the main outcomes from this public consultation. But just to underline some of, of the main takeaways, uh, we noted the strong support on Berek's uh, interests on environmental sustainability, including uh, the consideration of the whole uh, ICT value chain and the multi criteria approach, meaning uh, considering all relevant uh, environmental impacts, not only uh, greenhouse gases emissions, but also resources consumption and energy uh, fossil fuel depletion, for instance. Also, um, we noted uh, uh, an encouragement and agreement on BEREX uh, recognizing the positive role of ICTs on other sectors decarbonization and uh, some call to uh, insist further on this uh, indirect or second order effects uh, in uh, Berex's uh, conclusions and future work on environmental sustainability. 
Um, there, was a, there were also some discussions and some conclusions and <laughs> figures featured in the external study, as well as in uh, Berek's uh, draft report. Um, we noted uh, the support on the great place given to stakeholders and initiatives uh, in the report, uh, and uh, also the call to keep uh, uh, the diversity uh, in the list of stakeholders we plan to engage with. And to end uh, on these uh, aspects, uh, we also noted the positive feedbacks on the toolbox uh, at the end of the report uh, regarding uh, Berex's potential role on environmental sustainability uh, and also the, 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 the promotion of a stronger coordination and harmonization uh, with uh, other existing uh, initiatives from other relevant authorities or bodies. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. So this is uh, the structure of Berek's final report on uh, environmental sustainability. Um, you, if you were there at our last uh, public debriefing, you can note that uh, it was not amended from the public consultation report. Um, so we will now uh, dive into a presentation of each chapter and we will uh, make clear when uh, significant changes uh, were made from uh, the public consultation. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. So to start uh, our, the first chapter of Fabric's um, report on sustainability, gather some uh, first uh, element of background regarding existing uh, environmental targets and also uh, first figures assessing uh, the environmental footprint of the ICT sector that uh, was uh, uh, in, uh, initially in the external study uh, from Wick and Rumble. Uh, so the diagram on the screen uh, presents some of the main, uh, the most uh, important um, Berwick also uh, refers to a study uh, that estimates that the ICT sectors could account for 6 to 14 percent of GHG global emissions by 2040, uh, while noting uh, the limits of such an, an estimation and the rapid path of innovation and energy uh, efficiency gains. So from the public consultation, um, Berwick added an additional uh, study regarding uh, uh, that is using uh, data from uh, a group of operators in Europe showing uh, the um, limit, limited uh, electricity consumption increase uh, over the period 2015-2018, uh, uh, despite the, the growth in terms of data volume on uh, networks. And uh, besides the BEREC, uh, I did um, some further explanation on the range of uh, studies, the different hypotheses and uh, perimeters uh, included in the studies uh, analyzed uh, by this uh, diagram. We can go to the next slide, uh, please. Uh, and also uh, uh, the uh, VEREC report, uh, chapter two, uh, presents uh, some uh, case studies on first actions uh, um, led by NRAs on environmental sustainability, because as you know, it is a new subject uh, uh, for uh, telecom regulators, but uh, some uh, NRAs uh, have uh, pioneered the first actions uh, to mitigate uh, adverse effects of the digital sector on the environment, on the environment or to, uh, to promote uh, enabling effects of ICTs on other sectors. So the report detailed the three case studies on RCEP, Comreg and Traficom. And uh, besides, uh, some other examples are, are noted from uh, We Can Rebel External Study. Uh, it also uh, provides a, a, a general overview of potential tools available uh, uh, under uh, um, the Electronic Communication Code and uh, BBCOS Directive uh, to act on sustainability. So regarding the public consultation, uh, Berwick did not receive a significant amendment proposal to this part, uh, so no significant changes were made except uh, some updates uh, provided by the respected uh, authorities. <coughs> so I will now uh, give the floor to my uh, co-chair, Santarina. Thank you. Thank you, Sandrine, and good afternoon also on my behalf. We can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. The report also gives highlights uh, to some initiatives that Barrett carried out in the previous years. Firstly, summary reports of the series of workshops which were organized in October 2020. Secondly, Berek formulated some points in its opinion on BCRD recast also on the topic of sustainability. And the draft report presents also some conclusions regarding sustainability from the recent Berek's opinion on state aid guidelines for broadband revision. We can go to next slide. 
In order to learn more about the initiatives that were led by various other entities, and of course to avoid some possible duplication of the work, Beric held a number of bilateral meetings with quite a wide range of parties. In general, the consensus was reached on the positive effects of digitalization on other sectors, decarbonization, but also on how significant the environmental footprint uh, of digital technologies is, especially of devices, and uh, also of the manufacturing phase of these. From among the possible levers where Bere could contribute, the stakeholders mentioned especially data collection, incentives for the sector, and also consumer awareness mechanisms. In general, we didn't receive also many inputs for these two sections of the report, but the following sections were commented by many stakeholders and provided really many important insights. So we can go for the next slide. Very commissions an external report, as you have already heard. This was presented at Barrick Stakeholder Forum in March, so I will also not go into detail on its findings. The report also covers only the most important results, which we considered worth of uh, adding into our report. The study, uh, among others, listed potential levers which are available to the NRAs under the current legal conditions. And among these, the proposal to lift the access obligation raised some concerns from the stakeholders within the public consultation. And thus, Berek decided to remove this proposal from the report, as it also was not considered within the outline of future actions of Berek. Uh, yeah. I would like to present you now the main ideas which came out of the public consultation on the Berek report. Uh, regarding the planned work on data and indicators, the public consultation brought a number of proposals for further collaboration, especially with organizations focusing on standardization, but also with academical players. Beric also understood that there are already some existing regulatory tools for environmental targets that could be applied in certain situations. And regarding the proposal of the external study that NR NRAs could also encourage migration to more energy efficient uh, next generation technologies, the original wording of uh, the report was substituted to address the migration, again, based on some concerns which were raised by the stakeholders within the public consultation. From other actions, the possible analysis of the relationships between digital ecosystems, openness and sustainability in terms of devices, lifespan and software was added based on the final debate of the NRAs on the plenary. Many more potential activities, of course, are outlined in the report. Additional text was added uh, to the report stating that Berek would explore on developing its understanding of indirect environmental impacts, including positive enabling effects of digital solutions <coughs> on other sectors and rebound effects. All these actions should be done in very good collaboration with other relevant parties. We can go to next slide. Uh, with finishing this uh, initial work, Berek will now open a new work stream of sustainability, which you already heard about. It will uh, target the indicators of the electronic communications networks and services, and we plan to deliver the final report in autumn of 2023. Thank you for your attention. And now I'm returning the words back to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Katrina. And with that, we have finished the first round of question, uh, the first round of presentations. So we now open the floor for questions. Just for our audience online, we have not received uh, during this uh, debrief any questions yet. <laughs> I hope that you have appreciated the fact that we have all the questions that have been sent in uh, beforehand were taken on board by the co-chair. So if there is a reason to follow up on those, please let us know via the chat. So now I look across the room, which is quite far away. Um, can you please introduce, I, I will we'll take questions in chronological order, basically. Please introduce yourself and ask your question and we'll find a volunteer co-chair to answer it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Aurélie Dutrio from uh, Orange Brussels office. 
I would have two questions on the net neutrality uh, work stream uh, on the two aspects. So I under, uh, sorry, I haven't had the time to look at the fresh guidelines yet. So one quick question, uh, is there any opening on those uh, finalized guidelines regarding uh, voluntary measure or we may launch um, to uh, deliver public good for some zero rating for Ukrainian people or that kind of offer? Is there any opening or not at all? That's one question for the guidelines. And my second question relates to the new work stream of BEREC. Um, so the new report on the IP interconnect and fair share. I understand from what you said that there will be one paper, then a second paper, then the report. Does it mean that the two papers will feed the report or is it something different? And if it's different, will there be any kind of consultation on those papers or thanks for clarification. Okay, many thanks for the questions. Uh, first, I take the Open Internet Guidelines. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, basically the ECJ or the, the regulation have such a notion. So, yeah, I have to say that no, there's no specific exception to those. Um, I said that, that, well, of course, I mean, if there's a clear public interest, you might have a EU legislation or the national legislation to enable uh, such uh, practices. And regarding the the new work stream, well, we are not having any any public consultations for those papers. We are now, let's say, having a bit hurry to uh, get the, the the work work started. And, and and basically, that's the the idea that we can contribute the discussion because we've been seeing that there are plenty of uh, different papers, different opinions, and and and. We feel that we have also some expertise and, and, and possibility to contribute. So basically also trying to maybe see the, the well, forest from the trees and, and, and also hopefully getting some, some good facts to the table. But basically, yeah, they are the better contributions and, and basically it's kind of the opinion papers. We are not able to consult, uh, but sir, also that, that how they feed to the final report, we have to see. Of course, I mean, we are building on, on the, the previous work and, and, and I would say that, yes, the, the final report is, is of course, sir, uh, taking into account what has been said before, but uh, to what extent we are tackling all the same issues, I don't know yet. Thank you. And for sure, we are at your disposal to share any figures or insight on how the market works on fair share. Thank you. Luke, you have a question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Anne-Marie Lukinrich from uh, ECTA. Uh, it's also a question on the, on the new stream on, on IP Interconnect. Uh, a couple of questions to that. So we, we all have seen the WIC uh, study, uh, I presume that you all have seen it, uh, on, on, on more or less the same subject. And, and from the WIC study, we, we see that the, the perimeter of it is, is, is broader and uh, is it also the intention of, uh, of BEREC to, to enlarge the study to, to, to simply limit it to the IP interconnect? Because uh, is, if, if we see the evolution that is out of the week, uh, there are many new questions that, that, that are raised by that. Then uh, the second question is that, of course, we are in the debriefing of the, uh, the BEREC plenary, and, and in the BEREC plenary, we also have the DG Connect that is uh, present in terms of timing of in terms of uh, in fact like collaboration is not the right word but in in synchronization of the works has this been discussed in one way or another with with the intentions of the european commission or or is berek doing that in a in a, in a totally separated uh, path thank you Maybe uh, I'll start on the on the on the second one we know this is an ongoing discussion um uh, also because uh, there is this um, uh, reference uh, to um, uh, uh, to this uh, fair share discussion in the digital rights and principles which are about to be uh, about to be launched and we know that the uh, European Commission is working on on putting uh, that notion or that wish into something more practical uh, and we have been uh, so they have been taken part in this discussion and have welcomed the the, the, the two uh, aims or objectives that Klaus already mentioned, that is uh, help in analysis, in um, uh, re uh, um, redoing or, or um, 
uh, or taking up again the work that we have been doing in 2012 and 2017, uh, making sure that that is, uh, that that is checked against a, a present uh, situation on the one hand. So bring facts to the table and help, uh, help everybody to see the forest through, uh, uh, through the trees. Um, on both sides, uh, there is uh, not enough clarity on, uh, on a timeline, but we are very aware of the fact that this is ongoing and there is a continuous broad dialogue. I hope that helps. And on the first question, Klaus. Yeah, and I maybe to add that the, the Commission is, is participating in our work stream, and yes, we have a close collaboration with them, so um, for sure we are really trying to help the Commission also in their, their thinking. Um, regarding the, the first question, I would say that yes, we are having the, the bit broader uh, scope. We are not only talking about the IP interconnections, but, but really also just seeing the, the, the issue behind with the proposal. I mean, the, the cost drivers and thing, things like that. So, yes, our, our scope is broader. When I say, because certainly in the scope is that we have seen that the way that the content delivery networks have been, have been built and, and are evolving and those are kind of things, it, it's, it's a fundamental difference compared to the, to the first report it's since the time the first report has launched and, and really to, to, to understand if, if all those aspects will be covered as well so that we we would welcome a, 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 an as holistic as possible view on the on the subjects, of course. I Thank know. you. It's really uh, glad to, to, to hear that you welcome the work stream. As you may imagine, this is also ad hoc, an ad hoc work stream that we just started. And there is a whole, um, uh, of course, there's this whole dilemma on, on scope and timing and being relevant and accurate and holistic and everything. Uh, so we're doing our best, uh, but uh, this is just an announcement to make sure that uh, the expert working group has taken up this challenge and are really, at, as we speak, in the process of uh, scoping further the work and uh, doing it in a manner as transparent as possible. This is why we talked about the paper, so to make sure that we present what we have step by step um, and to make sure that we, uh, we contribute uh, to this uh, continuous dialogue in a, in a most transparent way. So we are basically, uh, um, this has not yet been completely um, uh, defined, of course, uh, to the extent to which we can actually deliver. So this is work, uh, as uh, Klaus said, uh, that is being designed as we speak. Are there any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, Peter Dunn from Cullen. Um, I'm, I want to ask about sustainability. Um, so in the, I think it's fair to say that in the draft report, it was rather focused on the contribution of networks um, for understandable reasons, because of the, the remit of most um, regulators. Um, I just wonder, given that that's only, well, definitely less than a quarter percent of the sector's impact, whether they work on indicators, any future work will go a bit broader than that, looking at production and retail and waste and all those other areas as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for, for your question. Uh, just uh, uh, maybe a precision on the perimeter of this first uh, uh, report. Uh, we do include uh, some figures, some first figures on uh, uh, devices uh, and data centers. And uh, we, the, the uh, BEREC is working under the frame of ICT related part of the Green Deal. So that does include increase uh, performance on the energy efficiency and eco-design of uh, devices and uh, climate neutrality and increase the uh, transparency for data centers and networks. So, of course, as uh, telecommunications are, is uh, co uh, Derek's uh, core uh, business uh, of uh, expertise, we do put a focus on this uh, um, tier, but uh, it is clear from the report that uh, Berek uh, noted the importance to keep a, a holistic uh, view and uh, uh, keep devices, data centers, and uses in the scope while assessing uh, the, 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 the problematic. So uh, that's it for me. I hope I reply to your question. I think you can count on us to, in our further work stream, take the whole, take the whole uh, into account. Only the instruments, of course, vary. Um, I have promised the co-chairs to end any uh, contribution I have on the sustainability debate with the call to please hold on to your phone for one more year because it really helps. So that is one of the instruments that we have and that I implement actively. I had a question on the side. Yeah, first, gentlemen. 
Thank Eduardo Lanza from Telefonica. It's more a remark than a question. Uh, when, you close, when you mentioned that uh, 10 years ago, uh, BETE has conducted a, a similar study, I will say that 10 years ago, the situation was completely different than nowadays. So I think it's completely uncomparable. And I will suggest, if it's possible also, to have in consideration the socioeconomic impact on the OTP fair share. Is, I think it's also very important. And um, with Telefonica, we will be happy to participate if it's possible as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, Jamie Patel with Amazon. Um, so I had a qu couple of questions on the open internet uh, files that you have uh, very kindly introduced to us. Um, is there any idea, any more clear idea about how the workshops workshops going to be organized because the timing is quite tight um, and it would be good to know um, what the themes or who would be invited to those workshops um, and then the second question I have is um, the uh, the draft open internet report which has just been put out for consultation today it was I think suggested that it would be presented at the December plenary and there wouldn't be any further consultation on it um, how does that interplay with the work that's going on on the on the network tax issue because the, the draft report, as I've seen, does highlight some of, the, some of the companies which have been targeted in this debate up till now. So I think it would be interesting to be able to see how we can contribute to that in a more meaningful way. Um, thank you. I think we are all a bit confused here, um, but maybe first the answer to the first question, which I think was relatively easy, and then try to get a bit more clarification on, on maybe as a general rule, um, we tend to uh, always consult guidelines just before making them final. Um, uh, opinions, however, are a different matter. Uh, what we do uh, always try to have is to have input from stakeholders, uh, but as it is an opinion, um, uh, that, that does not always take the form of public consultation. It may also take the form of set workshops. So maybe that helps in explaining the fact that the um, that we have uh, decided to have some uh, workshops uh, by invite only, but the specific specificities uh, Klaus and Veronique will, will will come back to. So to do collect uh, information, but a barrack opinion that feeds into a debate where you are all already also participating is not something that we put up for public consultation because public consultation is of course an instrument that we use before finalizing guidelines. So maybe. And, and actually, the Open Internet Work Group is having quite a full table at this moment. So we are devising this extra ad hoc stream on the um, supplier pace principle. Uh, that's one uh, with the reports and the workshops. And we are also applying an opinion on the complete revision of the Open Internet Guidelines, which is also an opinion in a debate. So it's also not consulted. And we've just finished consulting on our own guidelines. I hope that that helps in answering your question and then on the practicalities of the workshops i give the floor to klaus yes as mentioned i mean we are just designing the work and discussing what the topics are we need to discuss so basically at the moment we haven't yet uh, identified all the topics for the workshops and then of course we can't yet know i mean uh, either the, the the speakers we are planning to invite but but i think we had a pretty good let's say example from the internet ecosystem we had an excellent uh, workshops I mean, it's the information gathering exercise for our behalf, really trying to get the, the, the knowledge, the information and, and feeding our work. And, and first, yeah, then we know the, the, all the topics we would need to, let's say, analyze a bit further. Then we would also know, I mean, what are the relevant stakeholders and whom to invite. But at the moment, yeah, there's no more information on that. I think we have time for one more question um, to finish off this part of the public debrief. Or not? Fine by me. Oh, yes, Henk, go ahead. Um, uh, Henk Manakens, uh, IDAT, uh, DG World. Uh, just uh, also a question on, on the sustainability uh, working group. So uh, there was indicated so that future work will be done on, on, on indicators. Uh, of course, you already uh, replied a bit on that, but can you be a bit more precise on, on what um, indicators you or, or what are you mainly talking about uh, the networks uh, etc uh, you are looking into and and what would be the ultimate uh, goal of those uh, indicators uh, 
Thank you very much for the question. Um, currently, we are in the exploring phase uh, of this work stream, and we plan uh, in the initial stage, especially to collect inputs from the stakeholders. So we plan for the second part of this year, uh, call for input in form of questionnaire, and most probably we will also organize a technical workshop on the topic where we would like to invite all uh, the stakeholders which already uh, engaged within the previous public consultation because there was quite a lot of, uh, lots of ideas coming and lots of inspiration coming for this uh, work stream. So we would like to uh, cover all the possible uh, possible topics related to indicators like uh, spectrum management uh, standards already available, how we can work with these, but also uh, we expect some more inputs uh, from the uh, European Commission and mo maybe also from the European Parliament because uh, as you have maybe noticed, there were uh, some uh, movements inside the European Parliament regarding the wish of the Member States to work on the indicators and, and measurements uh, of sustainability of telecommunications networks. So we would also like to follow this involvement and uh, somehow uh, fit our work to these developments. Uh, so for now, I'm not, don't really want to be too much precise as we want to keep uh, the field really as open as possible. Uh, but we expect to go somehow these ways. Maybe to supplement, I think that stakeholders have been very clear in that we would all be helped with more consistency and alignment. Um, so regarding the scope, that is still very much to be decided, but I think we all feel a, an urgent need for more consistency and alignment of all the indicators and methodologies. And that would really help. There's a lot of numbers out there, but it would really help at least the regulators, but probably also other public authorities to get a bit more consistency in that data set. So not to add on to everything that's already yes, but again, going from trees to forests. So with that, I close the first part of uh, the public debrief. We are now on to our second part, which only also has three chapters. And we start with the roaming expert working group. And we have with us co-chair Joanna. Thank you very much. So today we will talk about the retail roaming guidelines. As you might have seen, we have already published the draft uh, wholesale roaming guidelines during May. And the time plan for these guidelines is quite strict. Uh, so we launched the public consultation earlier, and last week we launched the public consultation for the retail ones. Next slide, please. As you might have already noticed in the document, some parts have remained pretty stable. This concern, the scope of the regulation, that hasn't changed with the new piece of legislation, the definition of price for loan like at home, the implementation of fair use policy, as well as the surcharges imposed in some cases. The guidance about transfer between tariffs and tariff without roaming, the applicable charges for voicemail and SMS, and the charging <coughs> intervals, the guidance about sustainability applications and sustainability assessment, the vast provisions apart from the ones related to transparency issues, and the references to the M2M. Next slide, please. However, as a result of the new regulation, we have had to include some new parts or update some of the existing ones. In particular, as, the, as regards the application of Roam Like at Home, we have updated the guidelines because the new legislation includes new QoS obligations, which practically demand that Roam Like at Home is not only in terms of pricing, but also in terms of quality. For alternative tariffs, our guidelines clarify that QoS obligations do not apply and that uh, there is no automatic switch needed as, on, uh, as of 1st of July 2022. Coming now to emergency services, our guidelines remind that there is no charge uh, for access to such services. And this is not only the case for calls to 112, but also for access to applications used for this purpose. For countries having currencies other than Euro, the guidelines following uh, the new 
regulation align the relevant calculations with what uh, intra-EU communications and termination rates uh, legislative uh, thesis say. Uh, the scope of the guidance in our guidelines uh, has, uh, in, uh, has in been increased about transparency because it has to incorporate quality of service, value-added services, emergency services, and access to non-terrestrial networks. In particular, for non-terrestrial networks, uh, there is a definition included in our guidelines, and also there is a reference to the voluntary measures that operators can use to avoid inadvertent roaming for their users. A separate guidance is also included about the handover between mobile communication networks, uh, because the new regulation includes a reference to this, so we have included new provisions and uh, we also uh, give guidance that, they should, that operators should raise awareness about charging. Finally, for the case of disputes, other competent authorities could have a role according to the national specific regulation, and this is mentioned in the, in the guidelines. Next slide, please. Before closing this presentation, I would like to give you a short, about, uh, a short update about the next steps. So for wholesale guidelines, as already mentioned, the time plan is quite strict. Uh, we gave only 30 days for the consultation because we need to publish the final document by 5th of October 2022. For retail guidelines, the regulation uh, gives us more time. So uh, we launched the consultation last Friday. We, we granted two months time for this consultation and we will publish the final um, document uh, after P4 2022. As regards data collection, uh, you might know from the new regulation that we have to move from three, yearly, from three data collections per year to one yearly one. So we, we are consolidating the current data collection in one new template, including also the additional indicators. Uh, we plan to consult the new template during the summer so we can launch the data collection in September and have our first report to be published after P1 2023. Finally, as we expect that the Commission uh, will update the Commission uh, implementing regulation, um, we will prepare for a better opinion in 2023. And after the update of the implementing regulation, we will also update our retail roaming guidelines. Thank you very much. This is all from my side. And I will now give the floor to Karen Jorge to present you the draft report on the internet ecosystem. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everybody. So the idea now is is to give you a panoramic view eh, on, on the report we prepare because it's a, a dense report with a lot of pages. So, um, but the idea for this report is to follow the advice of, of San of, of of you on going. Um, out of our wall on just telecommunications and see also what is outside there that it's everything is connected and is connected of course to telecommunication services so so the, the the focus for the report was that to see everything together connected and more now that we have the dma where we expect to contribute uh, etc and see what is there, how things are connected, and where are the hot points on competition issues, open airs, and things like that where we can uh, contribute. So if we move to the next slide. Uh, the report you can see there in the, in the very website, and it's open to public consultation for uh, five weeks. We have leave a, a, a bit more because we, we understand that it's complex. And of course, we encourage you all, and not only the usual suspects that we know that will be they will be there, but as it is wider, it would be interesting to see also from another type of of actors because we are covering uh, many different topics. For us, the report is important because it provides um, an idea on what issues issues where we should go deeper. We don't have a deep analysis on each issue in the report because it would be one dozen pages. 
but what we should go further and where we can, as BEREC, contribute uh, um, in general. So, if we move for the, to the next slide, yes. Uh, here you can see an idea of the content of the report that uh, as told that the, the ideas you saw in the previous slide is to show the different elements, how they are connected and where are that hot uh, points needing further analysis. So you can see here the, the structure and essentially in the first two chapters we are providing a general view as well as first description of the different elements. You cannot see the detail in the in this slide, in the report you can see, but we have organized in three different blocks, the, the client part, the server part, and in the middle, uh, what you see in green is the connection part, uh, and our little communications work or uh, wall on uh, ISPs, etc., that many of us know very well, but there are many elements there. Uh, and in chapter four, you can find uh, a general view on what regulation applies, uh, what pieces of regulation applies to each element. It doesn't pretend to be exhaustive, uh, because there is a lot, but the main pieces of, of regulation that can be useful for, for for all of us, I mean, to understand the general context. In chapter five, you can find that diagrams you see there, very small with the shining yellow. Uh, what we did there was an analysis on where the different actors are, where the telecom operators are, uh, where the, what we call the provider specific ecosystems are, the big tech. I mean, where Amazon is, that we have Amazon here today with us, uh, where Google is, etc. And we try to classify a bit what each provider specific ecosystem is based on. Uh, and to get to some conclusions that we, we are open eh, to, to hear from you if we are right or not, if it can be nuanced, etc. And in chapters six and, si six and seven, what we do is an analysis on competition issues as, as told. It's in general it's a shallow analysis because if not, it would be 500 pages each element. But to detect where there are potential bottlenecks and things like that, that is very much related to what is in the DMA, but it's not only what is in the DMA, because you have here elements that are, are not gatekeepers in the DMA and still need further analysis where we can contribute based on, on our experience. And in seven, we go through open issue in, in a wider context that what is understood by openness in the open internet regulation. Because here we, we are seeing the whole picture and also seeing uh, innovation issues, etc. So it's a more relaxed and less restrictive concept to see where are the potential issues where we could contribute or uh, may affect uh, competition and openness in, in the context of uh, telecommunication services. Okay, so I give the floor to Chiara. For the main. Yes, and on the next slide, please. So for the main takeaways, what we see in our analysis is that uh, big tech companies, also known as uh, GAFAM, they were uh, most prominent in the client and service side, so they still are, of course. Uh, but what we are observing is that they are also increasingly investing in telco infrastructure. So there are uh, virtual network services, uh, CDNs, uh, which are lar largely deployed, uh, cloud computing, submarine cables, and also there are trends that we observe towards AIS provision as well. And we are interested in this because this, of course, can also impact ECS uh, competition dynamics and also regulation as, uh, as we know it. And um, what we also analyze in the report uh, is the provision, the type of provision of internet-based uh, services, uh, because we see that this can have significant uh, impacts. Uh, for instance, 
um, the services can be uh, provided uh, through uh, native apps uh, architecture or also through web architecture. And native apps is based on interfaces which are uh, defined and provided by some uh, um, what we call provider uh, specific ecosystems or the, uh, some private companies. On the other side, you have a web architecture which is based on common standards. And the trends towards a native app, uh, architecture can have impacts because, of course, it changes also the dynamics between users and big techs and caps and big techs. And it can also affect the, uh, the potential of the internet to stay open and to be uh, an engine of, in of innovation. Also, we have identified uh, potential bottlenecks uh, where we observe some competition uh, dynamics uh, uh, problems so that the competition dynamics are not sustainable or not working well. And uh, these kind of elements uh, are the CDNs, cloud computing, uh, many elements that we uh, call the enabling and discovery elements. And it's all the elements of the internet ecosystem which are used to access and distribute content and uh, um, and uh, applications and services. Uh, also devices we see instant messaging and some others. And as uh, Jorge was mentioning, some of these elements are not part of the uh, ECS regulation. They, some of them will be addressed by um, the DMA, uh, but uh, not all of them, all of the problems identified may be solved by uh, these new legislations. And also, finally, what we observe in general is that uh, the user experience in the internet is affected by many different elements, which are not, as I was saying, uh, currently regulated, at least not by any race. And there will be some of them will be in the near future uh, with uh, the DMA. On the next slide, uh, we see uh, then the future work, uh, because the, the idea of uh, this report was really to see where the issues were and where Barrack could also keep contributing on these uh, topics. Um, so as I was mentioning, we will focus on the competition and collaboration between uh, big tech companies and uh, the ECS providers, also taking into account this increasing investment uh, in uh, technical infrastructure and how this could affect uh, ECS regulation and, and competition. Then the CDNs and cloud computing, as I was mentioning, and also work on, inter on internet uh, architecture, uh, IP inter uh, interconnection uh, architecture, and uh, also the, the effect, and as uh, Klaus and Veronique were uh, mentioning before, uh, the new work stream is also inspired by the work and analysis that was carried out in the, this report on uh, the internet ecosystem. Then there are also, uh, we identify also uh, potential work on uh, devices, uh, also including smart speakers, virtual assistants and virtual assistants that were also included in the DMA among the core platform services. So it shows that as uh, we were also saying in our report last year, that it's uh, one of the services where um, further assessment was needed. So uh, we also welcome uh, now the, the final text on the DMA, including this, um, uh, these elements as well. And uh, what we also mentioned in the report is that we are giving here an overview uh, concerning competition dynamics and openness. Uh, but there are, of course, also other environmental aspects that should be taken into account when assessing the internet ecosystem. And this is also in line with uh, the priorities of uh, Derek. And that's all from our side. So I will give the floor to Paolo and uh, Iris. Thank you, Chiara. Paolo. Yeah. Here I am. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Paolo. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'll be presenting the report on measures for ensuring equivalence of access and choice for disabled end users. Next slide, please. Well, this report can be considered as an inventory of measures and initiatives which are in place through Europe, throughout the member states, in order to help, to assist, to meet the needs of users with disabilities. And this, the idea is that these inventory of measures can be used by NRAs when they are evaluating any action aimed at pursuing to ensure equivalence access and choice for this particular category of end users. Actually, this report is not new in the sense that it follows on from three previous reports, one of 2011, the other one of 2015, and the other one of 2018, which were drafted by Berek on roughly the same subject. Um, but with a particular element, something new, which is the fact that this is the first report that has been written after the introduction of the new Code of Electronic Communication. So on one hand, 
it follows on the three previous one in order to update information contained in the previous report, but it also includes some, you know, elements of novelty which were introduced by Nuno, the new code. Uh, it, I mean, it builds on, on the answer to a questionnaire that we sent to an array to gain insight of on how those issues of access and choice for disabled end users are addressed across Europe. Uh, the report uh, provides information on, on how member states are implementing the measure. And I would like to stress this thing because this is not only a report on how member states are implementing the code, implementing the measures of the code on, end, on users with disability, but on the measures contained because it collects information on a number of measures and initiatives that have been put in place in European countries, also based on the previous uh, on the previous directives, uh, and therefore the idea is to check rather than uh, what if countries, member states have implemented the measures of the code of, well, on the real measure, which are in place now, independently from, you know, which legislation, which is the legal basis of those measures. But of course, the measures are those contained in the code of, uh, of the new code of electronic communication that, as we all know, puts a lot of focus on this category of users. But it also, um, contains information on relay services and total communication services, which are, which were introduced by the European Accessibility Act, which was mentioned in the code. Next slide, please. Uh, the report is very rich in terms of information contained. It is structured in nine sections and five annexes, which describe, describe the policy principle, the legal background, how NRAs have implemented the provisions contained in the EECC, but also, as I was saying, the measures and initiatives which are currently in place with regard to the concept of access and affordability, software, website information, customer Customer services, retail packages, emergency services, of course, all related to the category of end users with disabilities. And then also contains information on the competencies of NRAs uh, with regard to the protection of end users with disabilities on adopting regulation, imposing obligations such as tariff packages, defining QoS parameters, and then additional standards. It also contains information on the funding mechanism, the implementation of those new services I was mentioning, like total conversation services and relay services, the engagement with disabled and users associations and stockholders, as well as um, information on the measure concerning on access to emergency services. Next slide, please. Uh, Actually, from the answers to the questionnaire, from the analysis of the answer to the questionnaire, I mean, it was not possible to, to single out, let's say, any single uh, best practice. Because the answer showed that there's no single way to ensure equivalence of access for end user and choice for end user with disabilities. And uh, even if it was not possible to single out best practice, it was nevertheless possible to derive some conclusions. And from you know, this conclusion is to is possibly to, to select, to say that an array should be aware that the code introduces a shift of focus from specific US universal service provisions to a set of general accessibility provisions. That is important to maintain a close collaboration between NRAs, government, and all other national entities uh, which are involved in these issues. Uh, it's very important to maintain a constant dialogue between NRAs and disability associates. John, uh, relay service should be multi-purpose 
and in doing so they should accommodate the needs of persons with different kinds of impairments. It's important to put in place targeted campaigns and any other accumulation activities by part of NRAs. And it's also important to promote accessible solutions for access to emergency services. It's interesting to note that, I mean, um, also, some of these conclusions go along the same lines of the directing implementation toolkit of the European Disability Forum, which we met in the so-called early stakeholder, through a form of early stakeholder engagement. Also, the EDIFED underlines the need for a close contact between a race and national organization of persons with disability, uh, and also EDIFED stresses the importance of having a continuous availability of related services. And with this, I have finished, I will pass back the floor to Anne-Marie. Thank you, Paolo. And with that, we have finished our second half of the public debriefing. Are there any questions in the room? Are we still alive out there? It's getting really hot and kind of oxygen deprived. I know. I know. No, nope, it's all crystal clear. Ah, Hank, which said from... <coughs> Um, yeah, Hinkman, I can see that. Um, on on the, the, the report on, on the internet uh, ecosystem, I'm very interested to, to take a, a deep look into that. Uh, my question is, is there also some quantifications in the, in the report? And do you also look at uh, somehow the underlying dynamics um, of the evolutions? These are, I know, very broad questions, but... Uh, would be okay. So the first question is, was if there are quantifications. No, I think that the, the approach is more qualitative. Uh, so we haven't go in deep in uh, numbers, as for example the report on the GSMA that recently was published and is a very good report with a lot of quantitative information. Because for us, what was more important is to was to identify the the hot issues and issues where there may be problems, but um, to be sincere, we don't go in depth in, in number. We have some numbers and quantification, but not. And about future evolution, I think that we are focusing more in present. Perhaps we are going a bit on the on the very short term, etc. But it's more about what is the situation now? What are what are the hot issues now? Where we as better could contribute contribute first because uh, simply it affects competition for electronic communication services, and second, and not only for that, because our experience applying ex-ante regulation in the telco sector could be useful on that. But in short, few quantitative, I think, and more focus in the present and very short term. Uh, I don't know, Chiara, if you would like to add. Yeah, no, the quantitative part is about uh, market shares and... Uh... But it's, there is no, I mean, we are basing, uh, we are using like uh, um, available data, but we are not uh, uh, going beyond and doing a quantitative analysis. Thank you. Luke, you also had a question? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm not sure it's a question, but it, uh, uh, let's formulate it in the form of a question. This, are this work stream and, and, and the IP interconnect uh, ad hoc work, uh, in fact, two faces of the same coin? So somehow, uh, I, I would say, or do you, or will you reconcile uh, both works and, and also in a matter of timing? And also on this one, the, the, the timing to respond on, on this subject and, and, and considering that the subject is very, very hot, sometimes you need to let it cool it down, eh, as, as we say, to have time, and there is not much time to have things cooling down. So, 
and there is a lot to do. So why also this short deadline? Thank you for, for answering the two questions. Just a clarification, the short deadline is referring to the public consultation deadline? Or the... Um, so on the first point, yes, of course, the two work streams are uh, linked. And uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the second one, so the one which is uh, the new one on IP interconnection and uh, the fair uh, share question is more, um, I mean, was like also uh, building on the analysis that uh, was done in the uh, internet ecosystem report. So of course they are linked and, um, and the analysis which will be done on IP interconnection will be again building on what was done before and uh, uh, in uh, Berwick uh, the experts are working on uh, both uh, topics so there will be of course uh, uh, coherence and consistency between uh, uh, different analyses and uh, on the uh, deadline so if you are so for the timeline um, for the public consultation is uh, we uh, we have uh, of course the schedule to be for the report to be ready by the end of the year uh, which means that uh, we have uh, to analyze the public consultation responses and also make sure that they can be correctly integrated in the final report so of course there is a timing which is uh, needed from from our side for the experts as well um, and uh, if you were mentioning the schedule for the fair share, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll let our colleagues uh, respond. Yeah, first, yeah, I have to say that we don't actually work in silos. We have had a very, let's say, uh, fruitful collaboration with their, their working group and, and the, the Open Internet Working Group. And then we are, let's say, working pretty much together. So you can yeah, pretty much also rely on that. that well, we get there, let's say, harmonize their also contributions and results from the work. And then, yeah, well, the, 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 the our timeline all, I already presented, so nothing to add on that. So you can also be uh, sure that uh, responses or uh, reflections on the public consultation of this Internet Ecosystem Report will also feed into our thinking on the uh, uh, the sending party uh, uh, the party payment principle um, uh, when, whenever that is relevant. Actually, the, and I think one of the striking um, connections between the two is that one of the uh, calls for future work that uh, the MIA working group already inserted in their report uh, was, uh, was to do some extra work or renew the, 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 the work on IP interconnection as it was already observed uh, earlier in this session that that work is like really almost, especially to 2012, it's like ancient history, so it has to be redone. So that is something I think that also that report concludes and the Open Internet Working Group just took up the challenge uh, rather fast. So I think that's uh, good news. Uh, just only a, a reminder for everybody. We know that we will receive contributions about the fair share because it's the hot topic, etc. But, but, but the, 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 our report is wider eh? than that, and in fact, I mean, it was prepared before all these discussions, so it's about the internet ecosystem, but of course, anything we will receive, we will share, and as Klaus was, was saying for the report, we were working <laughs> together, and on this we will work together, only to remind the scope of the report, knowing what is the topic now uh, for everybody. Thank you, Jorge, for reminding me. Uh, I just want to check, Luke, if there's any other questions. Uh, do you mind? Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, and thank you for recognising that Amazon is in the room. Um, and also, thank you even more importantly to rec for recognising the ongoing and increasing investments in telecom in infrastructure that we're making. Um, it's helpful for the debate. Um, the question I had, though, was uh, you've picked a very specific number of companies, and interestingly, they vary slightly from the from the companies which are which are parts of other debates was there a was there a re rationale behind picking those companies um and did you did you consult with with them in the in the creation of the draft report Um, so when we are analyzing, we are analyzing all the different elements, so mentioning more companies, of course, uh, but then when we are, there is a chapter which is on the main actors of the ecosystem, and that's why we are focusing on some main companies who are active on different elements of the ecosystem. So that's how they were selected. So they are selected according to their presence on um, a high uh, number of, uh, of elements. Plus, there are the ECS uh, providers as well, because, of course, it's in the core 
of our, I mean, uh, the core of our, our mission. Um, and the second question... Uh, if we consulted with any of them... Um, so, uh, no, no. we did not uh, consult with them uh, uh, earlier. I mean, uh, while uh, we were, uh, we were uh, drafting the, um, uh, the report, we uh, invited uh, several uh, experts. Um, but uh, this is, uh, it was also the opportunity for us during the public consultation to receive comments from uh, a variety of different actors. Of course, uh, there are an enormous amount of uh, uh, companies who are a part of the internet ecosystem, so that's why we were, uh, of course, uh, um, uh, trying to, uh, to focus on also on the drafted analysis, uh, but then uh, the contributions, of course, are welcome in this uh, phase, uh, in this stage of, uh, of the drafting. So you, if you think you're not mentioned enough or mentioned too often, please let us know. But let me please also echo Jorge's uh, uh, remark that the internet ecosystem is indeed, it is a very broad analysis and there will be many work streams in the coming years and many contributions made by Barrick from various elements. It just structures very much, I think, our thinking and, and our framework of analysis. Um, so we're looking very much forward to your, also your, um, your responses on the various aspects of this, uh, of this report. You had follow-up questions, Luc, or are they answered now? Just checking. It's, 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 it's a little bit a, a, a comment, if you allow me to do, uh, Anne-Marie. And, uh, the first thing I, I would like to say in all this discussion is, is that, of course, we all know it's, it's, it's as I said, it, it's very odd. What I see is that many, many people are uh, enriching their thinking process as, as they discuss it. And uh, I haven't seen a black or white uh, position uh, except for a few exceptions and so on. Uh, I have also seen, and I, I would like to, it, it's not usual to value also the expertise of, of, of Berek and of the NRAs when, when I was listening to, to, to their contribution to some events uh, recently and so on, where, where we really thought, yeah, that, that, that certainly they show their, their expertise, that's very good. But as you said, Anne-Marie, the, the internet ecosystem is, is, is something very, 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 very large and very diversified. And, uh, uh, and, and if we look also at, uh, at, at what, what our members do, and uh, you have sometimes very clear-cut boundaries, and sometimes those boundaries are not, are not very clear. And, and of course, it's always easy to take out the biggest, the biggest ones. Eh? And uh, of course, you have all this discussion about the big techs and their fair, fair share contribution and so on. But that's one part of it. But there are also many, many other players that, that by the, in the internet ecosystem that maybe that not are on, on the radar of, 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 the, of Berek and uh, the NRAs because, yeah, it, it's, it's by essence how, how internet works. And there I would also certainly call that we try to have a diversified view of this. It's so because in this, uh, we learn as we, as we discuss and as we grow in this, uh, and, uh, in exactly in the same way that uh, in, in, the, in the electronic communication sector, the incumbents are not the representation of the sector. The fact sector is much, much varied than that. In the ecosystem, it's even more diversified. And, and on that, I would really, really call that there is room enough for, uh, for discussions on, on the substance in, 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 in workshops or in, in whatever, and, and that, are, that are extensive, I would say, because is through the discussion that, that we will be able to, as I said, to, to, take, to take the right decisions and to, and to make the best uh, reports and recommendation or whatever it, it needs to be uh, going forward. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. I think that's also why we, it's the quality of the debate. I think it's also why we value this public debrief moments and also value uh, the public consultation processes such as one of the instruments in which we engage with all of the players. With that, uh, are there any other reflections? Uh, I know it is, <laughs> I think it's at least five degrees warmer than when we started. I have one more sheet that Il's already put up. That is to remind you of the various deadlines that we have for the various reports. They have all been already uploaded on the Beric website yesterday. So they're, they're, they're out there. Please um, send us your views, questions, remarks, insights uh, through the proper channels. 
please also, if you think we miss uh, a non-standard uh, stakeholder, uh, please alert them. You would be welcome to. Inputs from a wide variety of participants. And with that, I think we can conclude this public debriefing. Um, thanking you for your presence. We are looking forward to your inputs. Uh, we'll be working. Um, I cannot tell, I cannot order the coaches to, to continue working over the summer. I will not, uh, but they will. <laughs> I know they will because um, they're very, um, they're always very motivated to improve their work. Um, and we are scheduled for P3 at the beginning of October. So looking forward to seeing you the second week of October. Uh, to discuss our further work. With that, um, I can also tell you that alongside all the reports uh, that we are now offering for public consultation, of course, the, uh, the slides that were used in this presentation today are also sometimes very information dense and rich, and sometimes the letters as a result become a bit small, but they're also published on our website, so you can also read them if you want to um get that back and with that i close today's session thank you very much